And once he crosses the safety, this strong safety has to react, which is what makes this guy get so wide open in the corner against one of the hardest defenses that a one-play touchdown against in the game. The second this cornerback reacts and turns inside to the corner route, you know it's going to be an easy one-play touchdown because this guy here is now the one that's supposed to be matching, and he's nowhere near to be found. And it's just an easy bullet and pass lead away as we get another very easy one-play touchdown catch and run. And this cornerback doesn't think he has to cover this route, so he just shoots to the outside before he realizes that that's his man. And then once he crosses, you can see there's just never any opposition. He's just a wide-open, easy one-play touchdown every single time. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full offensive breakdown video for you guys today out of a brand new offense, the Pistol Tight Slots. If you guys remember, this formation was one of the meta offenses maybe a year or two ago. I think it was more Madden 23, but they tried to patch it. And I'm going to show you guys how to basically break that patch and make this a meta style offense once again, as this is probably one of the best formations that I've labbed in a minute. You're going to see this in a lot of gameplays going forward. But before I get into the video, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, I try to put videos like this out on Fridays or at least on the weekend because they're a little bit longer than normal so please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section the playbook that i'm using today is my custom offensive ebook if you guys want more help or more money plays you can download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking links in the description or the top pin comment but you can really find this formation in all their plays and pretty much any playbook that has this as far as my adjustments i just want to make sure that i have probably my best two receivers at these two spots here because that's where the majority of the one play touchdowns are going to come from but there's going to be a lot of different options i also put my fastest tight end at this spot here as i'm going to want as much speed as possible uh, my tight end I think is like 87 88 speed so that's pretty good but if you have like a 90 or higher speed guy it's really going to make this offense even more explosive now as far as my audible plays they're all going to be passing plays four audible passing plays i got the wheel switch which is going to be a one play touchdown against cover zero i have the bench switch which is going to be my dink and dunk play and also have some one play touchdown capabilities against certain defenses and the mesh the mesh is going to be one of the better plays against cover zero once again as well as a good dink and dunk play and then my one play touchdown against just about every defense is going to be the pa post shot so those are going to be the four that i have my audibles but i also have some options if i don't you know my opponent's not running a lot of cover zero because that's really all the wheel switch does i could put a run play in my audible section in the halfback zone or the counter y because i want access to both of them and my fifth play is going to be one of them i'm also going to start off with uh run plays because i typically that's what i do uh, just to get that out of the way there's only two but they're both very good run plays in the halfback zone the counter wide so i'm gonna start off with the halfback zone this is probably your best inside run if your opponent is spreading their defense too much uh, but it could also be treated like a stretch run especially if you motion across either this tight end or even the b receiver as i find this will help seal that wall a little bit and just help you sprint to the edge so that's something that i've shown in a lot of different videos typically i'll motion snap someone but on this play you can really do it to either side because that tight end is already tight to the line you don't want to necessarily do it against man coverage you can see right here i brought a defender across but they're running runoffs anyway, which means you're going to pull back defenders. So there's a good chance that that'll take care of that for me. But the point is, this is really something that I can really just use to run inside or get to the edge and have a pretty consistent run to either side. Now, the more explosive and even the more consistent run, in my opinion, is probably going to be the counter Y. So we'll go and pick that next. This is a play here where you're just going to want to hurry up and run it. You can motion that guy across, but I find that if you do that, you just typically bring more attention in this direction. And you can see how if I just hurry up and run the ball, there's nobody really out here. Although I do find that if you want to, like right here we have what looks like a blitz. If I motion this guy across, you might be able to help pick that up. But you already have two guys pulling in that area anyway that are going to be able to assist you. And you can see that the lanes aren't, are not pretty fluid. They're inside or outside. This is more like a trap run in my opinion compared to the other run, which is more like a stretch or an inside zone. So like I said, I can make that motion. You can see a guy comes across. That's not really a huge benefit. So it's something where I don't necessarily have to do that. Like I said, this is something that I can just run as is. But if I decide to motion that guy across, I do feel that it helps. And then, like I said, I just have to follow my pulling tight end. And he's going to spring me for a lot of big runs. So this is a very explosive run. It's a very consistent run. And just like the other run play, it can be run multiple ways. And you can have a lot of success inside or out. So there's only two run plays in the formation. But they're both pretty consistent. As you can see, I mean, this is just a huge lane. I'm gathering, you know, 10 to 15 or more every single time I run this play. But now we're going to get to some passing concepts. Starting with some dink and dunk stuff. Uh, typically the mesh i can spread the field a little bit by motioning out this y receiver or motioning out the b receiver because those are things that i'll do in, in other plays anyway and it's going to be a good way to confuse your opponent but i like to put the running back 
I want to curl over the middle of the field so that if somebody, you know, if these guys follow too heavy, I have that, um, especially your user. A lot of times user will just, they'll just leave when they see double drags. That'll give me an opportunity where I can always hit that curl over the middle. So this is really all about the drag routes. As you can tell against man or zone, these guys will eventually get open. They will always get open against some, they're somewhere either in the in-between zones or at the end of the zone or, you know, there's always opportunity, which is why I like this particular play. As you can see, he actually ran the route there and it's still Still didn't get there because it's a it's a linebacker going against a receiver so double drags is a really good concept and like i said if your opponent gets a little bit too antsy which they will a lot of times you can leave this guy just checking down right over the middle it's not necessarily going to be a big play especially in the computer because they don't make that mistake but that's something that you can do now you can also make that bunch concept again and this is something that i'm going to show um in an upcoming uh play as well motion this guy across and I'll block the running back this time, but you can motion this guy across, and depending on what coverage you're looking at, especially zone, this guy here will just get open for an easy catch and run, especially against what that looked like a cover three. So I'm going to go to my show now that this has some one-play touchdown capabilities against a lot of different defenses. We'll go ahead and we'll start off with uh, cover two, which is what we typically do. So Tampa two. Against Tampa two, just put the A receiver on a streak and just leave the Y receiver on a drag. I accidentally uh, took him off of that. And if you run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, the X receiver can easily be a big play, although the safety will typically drop back to the point where you might not get a catch and run one play touchdown. This is also my first opportunity to show you the glitch that this tight end does. Uh, it used to be in last year's Madden where you could put this tight end on a wheel route, and you can see it's not there. Right now, since he's lined up, it's a delay fade. So I think that they patched that, but they didn't patch it all the way to the point where if I motion this guy across, now I got that wheel route option once again. You can see now I can put him in a wheel route. Now that he's motioning across, he gets that running back option once again, which is something that isn't supposed to be there. So now I guess they're reading him as being in the backfield, even though he's clearly not. So I can take advantage of that by putting the X receiver or, or the Y receiver rather on a streak to pull the safety inside and then put the X receiver on an out route just to pull that cornerback down. And you can see how this tight end can have a very big throwing lane. If you have a lot of speed or if, you know, there's an opportunity for a good catch and run, but at the very least, it's a good play to know. Now, this play is a big play against a lot of zone coverages like cover three and cover four. So I want to show you that as well real quick. Again, it's off zone coverages like cover three and cover four. You can motion this receiver across. And as long as you're running it from a hash mark to the short side of the field and put this receiver on a fade, you'll notice that a lot of times you can get this receiver open as long as you make a quick throw to the boundary because that streak's going to pull that cornerback back. So cover three, cover four, any off zone coverage that's not matching, you can always use that trick. So that's it for that play. There's very similar things you could do with the bench switch. So let's go and let's pick that. I'm going to continue to go with random. This dink and dunk concept is going to be pretty similar, but I find that it works better against man because I have uh, some more options. The route that the X route is running is a better man being route. So I can put the B route on a streak if it's a man coverage, but since it looks like a zone, I'm gonna put them on a flat. And then I'm gonna put the Y receiver on a streak. And this is just a better setup as I'll be able to get outside on it once again, but that looked like a cover zero or a cover two hard flat. So that's why I threw it to the uh, to the curl route or the, uh, the corner route because he dropped on that right away. But if it's a man coverage, it's gonna be a different setup. So I'll know if a cornerback follows, which hasn't happened yet, as it looks like we have another cover too. I can put the A receiver on like an in route or something as another check down over the middle, but it's not 100% necessary as the X receiver is going to be the guy here once again as it looks like we get another cover too so I'm not gonna to have to show you that too much because I just showed that in the last play and it's very similar now I'll go on a back out and I'll pick man coverage because this is probably a little bit of a better man beater in the corner route so let's go let's pick that and pick cover zero both of these receivers will get open these outside corner routes will get open if you turn them into um, if you turn them into um, you know crossing the field type of routes like I have now the B receiver will get open inside if I just get a little bit of time and bullet and pass it away, that's a very easy one play touchdown. But I could do that with the other receiver as well. The only thing I really got to do is check and release drag the tight end for blocking purposes. But that's pretty much it, as this is going to work the exact same way. Once that X receiver gets across, you can see that, you know, these crossing routes a lot of times set picks on one another, which is what create this look. The crossing routes is what creates this look, as the cornerbacks a lot of times will run into one another, and I could really throw to either receiver. I mean, I got that receiver open, but the sideline's there, and because these guys ran into one another, this guy's got nothing but space for an easy catch and one play touchdown. Now, if you're running this against man cover one, I'll go ahead and I'll pick that. There is a slightly different setup. Obviously, you don't have to work as much about the blitz so you can just put the a receiver on a streak to pull back that safety and now you'll have a little bit more freedom to the x route as you can see we get that same bumping uh you know from the man cornerbacks once again although i had to throw the ball a little bit early because i really didn't do a good job 
as far as um, you know buying time in the pocket. So I'll go and I'll do that one more time. I actually block the running back now because, like I said, blocking is not as big of an issue. Uh, but you can see that this guy, you know, I think it's Jalen Carr just running right through my guard. But it's still a very easy one play touchdown against that man coverage as well. So that's it for those two plays. I'm going to show the wheel switch real quick before I get to the, the one play touchdown versus every single defense in the PA post shot. But the wheel switch does have its place in man zero. So let's go and let's pick that. I typically try to pick the uh, Overstorm Brave. Against cover zero, just motion this guy across and put him on a wheel route once again. And you'll see how all these routes on this side will create a lot of confusion. A lot of times letting this guy just get wide open. As you can see, there's once again a lot of routes for the safety and coverage to get through, making this a very easy one play touchdown to that wheel route once again. You can use this wheel route in any play in the formation, but I find that this combination is what creates this spacing. And you can see that once the play starts, that this safety can't get down, he can't get through his own defender, he can't get through the receiver, he just bounces around to the point where I could throw it right away. And we got another very easy one play touchdown to this wheel route to the tight end. But you really just have to watch for contact. It's very consistent. I'll go ahead and I block the running back too, which is important. And also run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. All that helps. But you can see it as long as you get that contact, it's there right away. There is looks like there's guys in the area, but they're man defenders. So they're not really going to be paying attention to anybody but their man. So that's it for that play. We're gonna get to the PA post shot. This is the best play in the entire formation, and I probably would run this the most. Let's go and let's pick that. We're gonna start off with Tampa 2. Again, it's cover two, just fade the Y receiver and put the B receiver on a 10-yard out route. And then change the blocking structure of the tight end because that's kind of a bad block. He doesn't really pick anything up. But you can see how this guy can just get open right up the middle as long as you get a little bit more pass bro because I was under pressure, it was under thrown. But you can see that it still works as it's the same concept of using a lot of different cover two one play touchdowns. Could also hit a one play touchdown against cover two man. Against cover two man, just put the Y receiver on a fade the same way, put the B receiver on a 10 yard out route, and you'll notice that the X receiver gets open right between the safeties the exact same way. Against cover two man, you could also motion this guy across and put him on a wheel once again. And you'll notice how a lot of times that defender will get caught inside the lineman amongst other things and you can see i can get another very easy one play touchdown possible catch and run if you have a fast enough tight end cover three is where it starts to get a bit unique let's go and let's pick that we'll pick cover three sky now against cover three there's some unique uh setups here uh one of them is going to be to motion this guy out put him on a comeback route and then motion him back hopefully your opponent will think he made a mistake after that you want to motion across this tight end and put him on a streak and put the Y receiver on a slant. Now I went ahead and I messed that up somehow. As you can see, the tight end is not on a true streak, so I'm motioning back. Maybe I should put him on a streak before I motion him, as you can see there was some weird thing going on there. But you want him to be on this type of streak. And you'll notice that that comeback route will pull back down the cornerback while the X receiver just gets wide open to the other side. And it's pretty quick. It's not like a, it doesn't take long for that to get open. Cover three one play touchdowns are one of the most unique and difficult things in the game. And you can see how this tight end is going to pull back that safety, eventually getting this post corner route wide open as you just have the bullet and pass it away. And that cornerback is nowhere near to be found. Now, you can also motion this guy across as long as you're running from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am and put the A receiver on a wheel, then put the B receiver on a slant. And this setup is something I've used in quite a lot of different things where you can see that if you have a fast enough tight end, there's an opportunity to get going, but it might not not necessarily be a catch from one play touchdown i'll go and i'll do that again you can see how this works is the x route will get the cornerback to match enough that the a route is going to have to be matched by the flat and if you throw it with good timing there is opportunity for a one play touchdown catch and run but it takes a lot of timing to get this down timing is everything is you're going to want to watch this guy here but you're also going to want to watch the post route above you the second this cornerback reacts and turns inside to the corner route you know it's going to be an easy one play touchdown because this guy here is now the one that's supposed to be matching and he's nowhere near to be found so i can throw that ball the second that i see him even with that guy as you can see i'm basically loading up the second i see that cornerback react and it's just an easy bullet and pass lead away as we get another very easy one play touchdown catch and run i'm going to do that one more time just to show you guys how consistent this can be as like i said it's really just waiting for that guy to react the second he reacts you got an easy play. It's just not always going to be a catch and run one play touchdown. It might just be a very big play. Another very hard defense to hit a one play touchdown against is cover four, which is one of the reasons I like this formation so much. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick 
the cover four uh, drop if I can find it right here. Cover four drop. For this setup, it's a very easy setup. You just have to motion this guy out and put him on a comeback. But I find that it works best if you do it from a short side of the field because he has to cross the field for this route to get open. So I can go ahead and motion this guy out, put him on a comeback route once again. Like I said, change my blocking structure for my tight end. And that's all I really got to do as this wide receiver will get open once he crosses the field and become the one play touchdown that I'm looking for. As you can see, there is a window here from 50 yards out. That window might be bigger if you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, but it just takes longer. It's not like it's hard to navigate a three-man rush, but it's the same setup. I'll go to motion this guy out, go to block my tight end. It's really just about, you know, buying time with all these extra blockers, and you'll see how it's the exact same thing, although this time you obviously have a much bigger window as I have more space to the open side of the field. And this play works once again because of what this route is doing. Once he crosses the safety, this strong safety has to react. He's now in his area. The cornerback is being held down by the corner route or the comeback route, which is what makes this guy get so wide open in the corner against one of the hardest defenses to hit a one-play touchdown against in the game. This play also hits one-play touchdown against cover four match. So let's go ahead and let's back out, go back to the nickel and find a matching cover four defense. This is a natural one-play touchdown against cover four to the X route. And it's because of the way that these routes just cross. You don't have to do anything. You just run from a hash mark to the short side of the field and you'll get best results. And this is because for whatever reason, this cornerback doesn't think he has to cover this route. So he just shoots to the outside before he realizes that that's his man. And then once he crosses, you can see there's just never any opposition. He's just a wide open, easy one play touchdown every single time. Now this also has a lot of man one play touchdown capability. So let's go and let's start off with cover two man. It's also very good against things like man cover one. So let's go pick cover one hole. Against cover one man, you have multiple options. A lot of times if it's a linebacker they won't even follow as you can see here he's not going to be man matched right away if you see that you can really just throw it right away because there's just you know the guy didn't follow if he does follow he still has a lot of opportunity will get open and i'll change defenses here in a minute to show that but you could also do things like hit the Y receiver, the X receiver. All these routes really beat it. If I motion this guy across once again, because you can see the safety just moved all the way across the field. So now the Y receiver is going to pull that guy back where the X receiver is just going to get open across. And we have multiple options here, although this guy kind of caught up, but we still could make the play. So I want a little bit more speed there for that to work. But that's not really my best option anyway. My best option is going to be the Y route. So let's go and let's do this one more time. As I mess this up, I'll go to motion this guy across. The Y route is really the best route when it comes to this type of defense. So let's go and let's see what happens if he actually gets across the field because he's running into a lot of garbage right now. But you can see how this route here is designed to beat cover one man. It's going to be easier if you run that particular route from a hash mark to the open side of the field though. So I'll go and I'll do that. Like I said, I don't have to make that motion with the tight end. I think that was part of the reason that he was getting caught up so much. I don't want that to be the issue here. I want to use that wheel route in other instances. So I'm going to give him a little bit more of a free release. And you can see when he makes that second cut that it's a natural cover one won't play touchdown as long as you have somebody pulling back the uh the safety above it now if you have some defense that has more cornerbacks on the field i'll go on a switch cover one robber here this is a look where you might actually have the guy follow i just wanted to show that this guy can still get open because wheel routes especially if you have a decent speed advantage still beat cover one man and since all the routes on the other side are pulling the safety across this is another option for one play touchdown against his defense and then last but not least we got cover zero We'll go ahead and we'll back out. We'll continue with the Overstorm Brave if I can find it, which is always fun, always difficult. This is another play where I could just, you know, give myself a bunch of check downs, check and releases, just so I can help my blocking structure. And the X and the Y route are both very good plays, but the Y route's going to be the best, as you can just wait for him to cross and get a very easy one-play touchdown once again. But you got a lot of different options here once again, as I'll just put check and releases here and fade that Y route, and hopefully this will buy enough time for that X receiver, because once he crosses, post routes are a natural big play that can be a one-play touchdown against cover zero as well. I just find that the Y receiver is probably better. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more offenses like this or more defenses like this next week, make sure to be a subscriber, hit like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.